Let's welcome in our co-hosts. Uh, we have, uh, because of unusual circumstances, uh, brought in uh, most of the entire panel this morning in this first segment, including the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Billy, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Rob. Good to be here. Delegate Michael Height. Michael. Good morning, Robert. Attorney at Law Larry Schultz. Lawrence. Good morning. Great to be here. And via telephone, Joseph Ferretti as well. Attorney at Law, Joe, good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. It was uh, late last night. The news broke that Berkeley County Prosecuting Attorney Kitty Wilkes Delegetti had filed a petition for the removal of Berkeley County Sheriff Nate Harmon. She went to the commission. Uh, the commission uh, supported unanimously uh, with their vote the petition uh, to remove. Uh, Joe Ferretti has uh, thoroughly gone through this petition, and as he did previously with Matt Harvey's petition to remove the two Jefferson County commissioners who had failed to attend meetings, uh, he's here to also offer his legal advice. Mike Carl's firm, Bowles Rice, represents the county. He has more or less recused himself from this segment. He'll join us later on in the 9 o'clock hour when we get back to the usual Friday 5. Uh, we'll also, at this point, we are scheduled to have Berkeley County Commission Vice President Eddie Gokenauer at 8.30, and uh, Berkeley County Commission President Jim Whitaker right after that around 8.40, 8.45 on the program via telephone. Joe, if you could take us through the bigger points of this petition and the grounds that Prosecutor Kitty wilkes Delegetti has cited for removal of Sheriff Nate Harmon. i uh, be glad to, Robin, as we always do when these sorts of filings take place. Uh, we always want to caution that these are in essence, allegations at this point. Anybody who's in the position of being a defendant having to respond to allegations of this type, uh, of course, uh, will always have their day in court, will have the right to present a defense. So we, with that cautionary note, uh, I, I will ask our listeners to remember that back, uh, gosh, a couple of months ago, there was an indictment in Berkeley County for misdemeanor accounts, uh, but an indictment handed down by the grand jury regarding Sheriff Harmon. And that had to do with that January 2023 motor vehicle accident involving his daughter. There were four counts, two for obstruction and two for uh, lying to an investigative officer. That investigative officer being a state trooper who was selected by uh, Dan James, the special prosecutor, who was selected by Katie Wilkes Delegati to investigate the sheriff's conduct and activities surrounding his daughter's motor vehicle wreck. So remember, there were four counts pending there, and those four counts are the first four counts of this uh, petition for removal. Added to that are additional allegations that the sheriff used his official position to direct subordinates to uh, secure government-owned devices, uh, such as that GPS tracking device that he had placed on his daughter's car. Remember, he had discussed that uh, on the show, Rob, with us. Uh, he had directed a subordinate to do that. And that's in violation of uh, uh, West Virginia code regarding the private use of public equipment. Uh, there's an additional count for uh, directing a subordinate, which in this case would be a deputy, to retrieve and administer a preliminary breath test of his daughter for his personal benefit. Uh, the allegations being that those uh, results from that breathalyzer were not published, were not a part of any criminal investigation, uh, that they were simply used by the sheriff himself for his own benefit. Uh, the, another count, count seven, has to do with uh, not only did he secure that government-owned GPS tracking device, but he did use it only for personal use. It was only affixed to his daughter's vehicle, uh, and it, has, it was not a part of any investigation conducted by the sheriff's department itself but only for the sheriff's own benefit account eight it has to do with uh, using a county-owned cruiser to drive to and fro uh, relative to a place of private employment and and this bears a little bit of explanation rob 
the sheriff apparently holds a position over at uh, Summit Point Raceway where they also do law enforcement training, uh, active shooter training, and, uh, of course, driving training, evasive maneuvers, things of that nature. And the sheriff apparently uh, has a part of that business, and the allegations, and this includes count eight, count nine, count ten, uh, have to do with him steering government contracts to that business and also driving a sheriff's cruiser to and from that business. So he'd be using public property for personal gain. Uh, and then lastly, there's an allegation. Well, there's two more allegations. One is that uh, he also toured various schools and other large businesses and buildings in the area would discuss the threat of uh, having an active shooter at those locations and convince those folks to contract with the people at Summit Point for active shooter training. So, uh, again, utilizing a, a public office to steer business to a company where he had a pecuniary interest. And then lastly, there was uh, an allegation that he unlawfully appointed an applicant to serve as a deputy sheriff, despite the fact that the Civil Service Commission declared that individual ineligible for employment, and that would also be a violation of West Virginia Code. So, uh, in summary, uh, uh, additional allegations into the one, uh, uh, additional allegations other than the ones we already knew about from the grand jury action a couple months ago, uh, and I, I think if I think it's fair to say that if some of these are, are proven to be true, uh, very troublesome with respect to our sheriff. There was a mention in this uh, petition, Joe, that also made uh, note of the fact that Sheriff Herman had gone on a radio show. I'm presuming it was this one because he went on this one to discuss his daughter's situation during the DUI suspicion and that he had lied about it on this show. Uh, any particular reason why that, it didn't say this show, it said a radio show. Any particular reason why something like that would be included in this petition? Well, I, I think, Rob, because when the essence of these allegations are that this is a, a breach, in addition to a violation of the law, of course, but this is a breach of public trust. And when you go on a radio show or any uh, you go to any media and you make statements, you you issue statements, uh, and you do that in your official capacity as the sheriff of Berkeley County, which is what Sheriff Hartman did in a number of, of situations or instances. Uh, you know, you're, you're you're still speaking on behalf of, of uh, your your department and and your role as an elected official, and when you make statements that are allegedly false, misleading, uh, whether purposeful or not, uh, you know, that, that's a breach of the public trust. And I think the, the petition for removal is, uh, in essence, a claim that we've, we've crossed the Rubicon here. You know, this is a bridge too far as far as the, the reputation uh, that we have uh, hold dear with regard to our elected officials. This is this is going to affect his ability to do the job, uh, both in terms of dealing with his, his workforce, his deputies, and also with the public. And so uh, it's just another example, I think, by citing some uh, statements that were made on the radio. It's another example of somebody who right now is acting in a way that is disqualifying. Joe, I want to read a couple of uh, statements here. Uh, mm -hmm. One is from the prosecuting attorney, Katie wilkes delegetti who filed this petition she said she wants to make it clear she did not select Dan James, the special prosecutor. That, of course, is, is you request a special prosecutor. It goes to Charleston. They select the, pros the special prosecutor yes. out of yes. a pool, most likely, not always, but most likely of local uh, um, prosecuting attorneys and their staffs nearby. Uh, also, this is from Harley Wagner, who is the defense attorney for Sheriff Harmon. Much of what is being alleged against my client is being done so in a factually inaccurate manner. 
and portrayal of a good and honorable man, a man of which I remind all has dedicated his whole life to public service on behalf of others. Service to our country as a United States Marine. Service to our state as a West Virginia State Trooper. Service to our home, Berkeley County, as the elected sheriff. There will be a time to further speak, and it will be a court of law. In a court of law. That is from Harley Wagner, who is the defense attorney for Sheriff Harmon. Uh, Bill Stubblefield, yeah. I will begin with you if you have a question for Joe regarding this. Yeah, uh, Joe, and this may be a question we can ask Eddie uh, Gokenhauer and uh, uh, Jim Whitick when they come on earlier, come on later. Why now? Uh, the sheriff had been arraigned uh, in front of uh, Judge Faircloth. He will have a trial uh, sometime in the next three or four months. Uh, why now? Is it the new counts, a new count 9, 10, 11, uh, that would expedite uh, or make a sense there needs to be more haste at this point in time? Well, I, 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 you know, I, I would have to get into the head of, of uh, the county commissioners and, and our prosecutor to answer that uh, accurately but i have to believe that yes there's additional evidence now which potentially you could argue standing alone if proven would be disqualifying for the sheriff holding this position going forward but added to what's pending in the criminal courts yeah you you can make a case that uh, the county commission and the prosecutor uh, could come to the conclusion that they could no longer uh, allow Nate Harmon to serve as our sheriff in the county. And, and because uh, you can imagine, uh, as we know from the, uh, prosecu- uh, the prosecution uh, that is pending and the grand jury actions that were taken, uh, some of that information and testimony before the grand jury came from the sheriff's deputies. So you have to wonder, if you're sitting there as a county commissioner or you're sitting there as a prosecuting attorney, how is that office going to function when there are there, there's instances where you have deputies offering testimony and evidence against their superior, their, their, their employer? Uh, so you got that issue uh, as to whether or not the sheriff's able to go forward and, and carry out his duties. And then you have, again, this issue with the public. Uh, every day in our courts, these deputies and the sheriff are testifying in, in criminal prosecutions. When they take the stand in their uniform, and you can bet the prosecuting attorneys have them wear their uniforms, uh, they do so uh, with that, the idea that we all have in the public that they are there to protect and serve. And uh, so they're, they're accorded a little bit of uh, deference when they get on the stand and testify. You assume that the information that they're providing in the courtroom is, is going to be truthful and accurate. And this breach of the public trust, if these allegations are true, affects that whole process. Joe, as so a, I think I think with good cause, they can question whether or not this is a fellow who can continue working on the job. Bill, before you follow yeah, up, I okay. want to go around the room first okay. because we have limited time this sure. morning with Eddie coming on in about 10 minutes. Mike, go ahead next. Mike, Mike Hyde. Well, uh, Joe, I'm just going to say I'm, I'm glad you started with the, the whole point that these are allegations, and, and this man is innocent until proven guilty, and we should not be trying him in the court of public opinion. There's a, a, a way what, about this. That's what he, Facebook is for. <laughs> that's exactly right. Um, <laughs> he's, an, he's entitled to his day in court, um, and, and that's sort of where I was with this. I was, I was um, shocked that this went to the county commission. Um, I felt like uh, Katie Wilkes, and I hope to hear from her on this later on, but I was shocked that she went to the county commission. It was well within her authority to do this without um, uh, having to go to the county commission at all, without them having to to make a a, a resolution at all. Um, This could have gone on without that. So um, I was I was really shocked by that and i'm i was shocked by the fact that the county commission just didn't say you know katie you're well within your rights to, to an authority to do this why are you coming to us regardless I, you know it is within statute that 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 is one of the the means for removal um i, I guess my question for you joe and and the other lawyers in the room is um is he removed at this point or is he still the the sheriff at this point um because this is this is just the first uh the the beginning of him being um 
tried or 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 having charges brought to him. Beginning so, of the process. Yeah, good, Joe. Process. Answer that question. Yeah, no, there, there's not immediate removal. There's there's no uh, under the statute. There's no provision for like suspension with pay or without pay or anything of that sort. Uh, it's a process, and uh, unfortunately, in some circumstances, as we're seeing in Jefferson County. Uh, it's a process that's not going to move at the speed that one would hope, uh, because, you, you know, when you start talking about uh, a circuit judge sitting down and reviewing everything, then a three-judge panel being appointed, there's a lot of schedules that need to be uh, meshed here before uh, the process can actually take place. So it's, it's not, nothing's going to happen immediately. Larry Schultz. Uh, yeah, I would also add that the, the code section we're dealing with, uh, 667 and the the uh, others in that same part of the code do talk about there being a couple of ways you can remove a sheriff. And what I see here is um, prosecutor Delegati saying, um, we're going with what uh, we sometimes refer to as a belt and suspenders. Um, We have A or B we could do. We're doing both A and B. And we're going to make sure that we follow exactly what the code tells us to do. And it does give the county commission a vote uh, to resolve, uh, to uh, dismiss the sheriff. I'm not clear from my light reading of this statute whether that's required before a petition is filed to the court. But um, she did them both. Uh, She did both the options. And... One of the things to go back to what um, um, one one of the other panelists was saying is the most important thing is the credibility in if to criminal prosecutions in this county is the credibility of the officers. And if there's an officer who's accused of or who did um, lie to the state police, that's not a good look. That's a terrible look yeah. because that is the one big line between the criminal side and the non-criminal side. And if there's a question about whether the sheriff is hopping back and forth over that line, then your all kinds of prosecutions could be affected. You could get a jury who comes in there and say, well, okay, that police officer in uniform swore to it, but what about this other guy who swore to something and it wasn't true i'm gonna play the mark Furman uh, defense uh, yeah. Right? yeah i'm gonna play devil's advocate here a little bit and and say these allegations are serious uh, they're without question they are very serious but what happens if we go through this whole process and sheriff Harmon is found not guilty on all charges and now he comes back as the sheriff. What kind of relationship do you think we're going to have with the county <laughs> council, the prosecutor's office? It can can we even continue at this point? In any, even if he's found innocent, can he continue and be an effective sheriff in Berkeley County? It, it seems like it will be difficult because this is where the the lo- enforcement of the law and our politics um, both dwell in the same person and. You know, if people are not going to believe what you say as a political candidate or or as a sheriff, then they're certainly going to have questions about what you say as a political candidate. And so it is it's harmful to the system no matter how it comes out. Bill. But yeah. But Mike, this uh, this sort of problem is not unique to Berkeley County. It happens a lot of places. And so someone, if they found innocent after the fact, then they come back and they have to build up a relationship as best they can but the alternative is is the the system says that if there is a indication of wrongdoing they have to investigate it and we have to do it through the court system so i don't think that we can fault either uh the county commission or the prosecuting attorney either one in fact i think both of them should be commended for doing the job and the next step is the court process. Nor was I implying that. And, and, but, absolutely, we yeah. have to. There's enough evidence here. We have to do something. Something has to have been done. I so. want to go go back to Joe here real quickly. Uh, Joe, I don't recall the summit point information coming out in Dan James' investigation. Did it? No, it did not, uh, Rob. The, the the Dan James investigation uh, focused uh, almost exclusively on 
that I think it was January 6th, 2023 motor vehicle wreck involving the sheriff's daughter yeah. and the, uh, the breathalyzer that was or was not given. Remember, there was a question about that at the time. Mm-hmm. And also this, this tracking device, uh, that was information that ordinarily would be part of a criminal investigation. Uh, if there's suspicion of, of driving under the influence and, uh, the allegations are that that GPS tracker information was wiped clean by the sheriff and that uh, he, he, he basically uh, round filed the uh, breathalyzer results. Uh, again, allegations, but that's the, the focus of Dan James was on, on that uh, situation and the fact that the state trooper asked the sheriff about it and the sheriff allegedly lied about that information. Can we then presume, since it was Katie Wilkes Delegate's petition, that that was information she uncovered in filing this petition about the relationship between the sheriff and Summit Point? No, I think I think what the process there is that Dan Jane stepped in, uh, because I think Katie Wilkes Delegate did the exact right thing there, which said, look, I, I don't want to investigate the sheriff in my own county, uh, so let's get somebody in here to do that. And Dan Jane stepped forward and did the investigation and produced the information he had, which was all then presented to the grand jury. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think Katie Wilkes Delegate's office uh, had anything to do with with uh, uncovering that information. That was all part of the special prosecutor's actions. All right, we need to do a break here. We'll be right back with uh, Joe Ferretti and uh, the Berkeley County Vice President of the Commission, uh, Eddie Gokenauer, too. The- just taking a look at our phone lines. Sorry for the distraction there to make sure that what we had wasn't disconnected. I think it might have been, but I think we got it back. Also by uh, Craig Blair for Senate, the Eastern Panhandle's first and only Senate president and lieutenant governor, Craig Blair. In studio with Bill Stumblefield, Mike Height, Larry Schultz via telephone, Joe Ferretti. Mike Carl will join us in the 9 o'clock hour, and we are now joined by Berkeley County Commission Vice President Eddie Gokenauer. Eddie, thank you for calling in this morning. Yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, Eddie, uh, talk to me about the commission meeting yesterday and the vote, which was unanimous to support the petition by Katie Wilkes Delegate, the Berkeley County Prosecuting Attorney, for the removal of Nate Harmon. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yesterday was a very, very difficult day uh, for the commission and, and for everybody involved. We were uh, given information uh, by the prosecutor and by the county uh a legal director uh, of issues concerning the sheriff. And, uh, you know, we almost felt as if we were almost like a grand jury where we were being presented with uh, evidence and is there enough information there to move on to the next step? So uh, that was that was our decision. And, of course, the next step is to the chief judge. The information that was presented, was it information that was also available in the special prosecutor Dan James report, or was there new information presented to you in the report Katie wilkes Delegate presented? Yeah, there were additional uh, stuff added in. Um, I haven't necessarily seen Mr. James's report. I don't remember looking at that. Um, I'm, I'm not familiar with all of his findings. I know... I am familiar with uh, his charges against the sheriff, the, the four uh, misdemeanor charges. I am familiar with that. But, uh, yeah, it, and it's almost like uh, the deeper they dug, the more they found. And, you know, once it was presented to us, you, you, you really and truly, I personally felt responsible to the fact that I now know about these things and that there's evidence to support them. And if I don't act, then I feel as if I've not done my job. And trust me, this is a very, very difficult position for all of us to be in. Um, But we did the job that was in front of us. I want to go to Joe Ferretti first because he's at the inherent disadvantage of being on the telephone as opposed to being live in studio. Uh, Joe? Eddie, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, I, I have to believe that uh, as difficult as this was, uh, there were overriding concerns 
uh, with these this cloud of these allegations, it was overriding concerns about the sheriff's ability to continue to do the job. Yes, sir. Uh, I tell you, one of my main concerns, quite honestly, is the integrity of the testimony of the deputies that when they're in court, that they not get painted with the same brush uh, as a sheriff who has been indicted uh, of lying to a police officer uh, during an investigation. Please take in mind that I know that the sheriff is innocent until proven guilty. I absolutely believe that, and I'm hoping that, um, you know, that, that the good will prevail out of this, of, of whatever it works itself out to. And the other thing is that this will give him an opportunity for due process, that, that he will now have the evidence against him, and he'll be able to put up his own defense. Bill Stubblefield. Yeah, Eddie, my question is kind of a statement. I want to try to put some space between your office and the prosecuting attorney's office. Your resolution is directed to the circuit judge. Katie's action will be directed to the circuit judge. Your resolution is not directed toward the prosecuting attorney at all. Is That's correct, is it not? Yes, sir, that's correct. And the third way to do this would be petition from the voters. So what's happening now, and Larry used the expression a while ago, suspenders and belt. So two different offices are taking their own course of action, both directed to the circuit judge, but not to the other party. Yes, sir. Okay. Mike Height. Good morning, Eddie. Um, I I just wonder, was there ever any um, thought on part of the commission um, to not do this resolution, that the, the prosecuting attorney had the ability to do this on her own? She didn't need a, um, a statement from the county commission. Um, was there ever any consideration to say, Katie, go ahead and do this. We're going to stay out of it um, and see how it plays out in court. Uh, yes, sir. I will not answer for the other commissioners, but I can tell you personally, I wrestled with that myself. And then uh, I came to the resolution that, look, I have been, been presented with uh, this information and I'm, and I, I'm not going to turn my back on my responsibilities or um, um, I'm, I'm just not going to walk away. Uh, that's the easy thing to do. And trust me, this is very, very difficult. But uh, I felt as if the decision that I made yesterday was what is best for Berkeley County and the Berkeley County Sheriff's Office. Larry Schultz. Yes, the the two um, possibilities in the statute are connected to one another by or, literally the word or. Sure. And not and. And so they're not both required. But a good prosecutor, a good lawyer in almost any line of work, takes every avenue available that fits the evidence and carries it through. It's better to do it that way, I believe, even though it's difficult for or people like uh, uh, Commissioner Gokenauer, um, so that you can say, look, I didn't decide which one I thought favored my desire uh, to win more. I brought them both. And if I won one and lost one, I could still go forward. But she's uh, making both uh, appeals. We won't know whether her written appeal to the judge as a prosecutor, will succeed for some time now. But, uh, they, yes, they they do it that way. People do it that way because they don't want to leave uh, an open door. They don't want to leave something that they didn't try. You, it, when it's time to go, you go with every tool you can take with you. And I certainly wouldn't criticize uh, the prosecutor or the county attorney uh, for making those choices. Eddie, any final comments? No, uh, just like I say, you know, this this was a, a very uh, difficult day. Um, the sheriff is innocent until proven guilty. We did set up a process. Uh, actually, the, the state law sets up a process for him to have his day in court and be able to 
uh, answer these charges. And, and that's the best that we can ask for. Thank you, Eddie. I appreciate your time this morning. Yes, sir. Thank you. Berkeley County Commission Vice President Eddie Gokenauer, uh, Berkeley County Commission President Jim Whitaker will join us in uh, just a few minutes here. Uh, Collins uh, in the process of making that call now to get uh, Jim with us. I also uh, received a text from the prosecutor, Katie Wilkes Delegetti, and she will join us right after Jim Whitaker, too. Oh, very nice. So uh, that uh, helps uh, fill in a little bit of information as well. Uh, Bill? Yeah, going back to Mike's point uh, earlier, and I think it's a good point, uh, the sheriff is not going to be immediately removed. Uh, Correct. It has to run the whole process. So that means there's going to be a period of time that the county commission, the prosecuting attorney, and the sheriff will have to work together. Uh, this is going to demonstrate the metal. Can they, in fact, look past these legal differences and do the job they're supposed to for the betterment of the county? I believe we have Berkeley County Commission President Jim Whitaker with us right now via telephone. Jim, good morning. Thank you for being on the program today. Uh, good morning, Rob. Thanks for having me on. You're uh, with uh, Mike Height, Bill Stubblefield, Larry Schultz, and Joe Ferretti, who's also via telephone line here, Jim. So uh, there'll be a few different voices coming at you this morning. Uh, tell me your impression of the information presented to you yesterday and your decision to vote along with the other uh, members of the commission to uh, move this to the next step. Well, Rob, I'll tell you, it, uh, I didn't take this decision very lightly. I've been listening to the uh, comments of, uh, of Eddie and, and everything that Joe had to say, and, and actually all your uh, the members there. Um, after we were given the information, we studied it and read it, uh, I personally, I felt that it was uh, worthy of, of having it move to the move to the direction that we did in the resolution to uh, to the circuit judge. Um, if he feels like that it will go on further from there, it needs to, then that's uh, that, that would be his decision or hers. Um, I just uh, with that information that we had, it 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 just needed to go beyond our our um, ability not our abilities we could have you know we could do it on our own i guess to a certain degree but um i just felt like it needed the eyes of the of the legal uh, legal system so bill you've been in this situation also as a berkeley county commission president yeah and i think jim and eddie captured it just just right they have a job to do uh regardless of what the other elected officials did chose to do the county commission had a job to do their only recourse in this case was to pass a resolution to the circuit saying that we believe there's there's a uh the fault to be had we ex uh we expect the circuit to look at it from the judicial aspect and if action is to be taken the circuit will do it but the county commission did exactly what we elect them to do, looking out for the county and during, doing their job, irregardless of any personal consequence they may feel. Mike, I yeah, I, w I would agree with that. And, it, and so far, I'm going to say that I am impressed with the professionalism I'm seeing from all sides so far that that I believe the county commission did what they had to do once the evidence was presented to them. I believe Katie Wilkes Delegate and the prosecuting attorneys have done what they had to do um, when they had the evidence. There needs to be an appearance um, to the citizens of Berkeley County that no one is above the law. And, uh, you know, as difficult and sad as this situation is in Berkeley County, I believe that is what has happened. I believe that everybody involved has done what they had to do. Larry Schultz? Yes. And as time goes on, um, and more of the uh, sheriff's public statements are countered in some way. I don't say that countered 100% or, or uh, invalidated, but then you begin to see the outlines of this dispute. And it would be perhaps kind of difficult if what you had was the prosecuting attorney asking for removal and the county commission voting no, it wouldn't stop it. But now you have a conflict on the one side. Again, the thing that Katie Wilkes Delegati avoids by, by the belt and suspenders approach is everybody in the government, except the sheriff, is on the same side. Jim Whitaker, your comments on that? Yeah, that that's that's pretty much sums it up for me. I tell you, it was 
the decision that, uh, that I, like I said, I had to make, I, it wasn't just uh, for me as the council president or the commission president. It was for the citizens of Berkeley County and the integrity that, you know, that people looked at me, voted me in to try to uphold integrity, to try to make sure that, you know, th- their county was looked after and the, and the citizens were looked after, the departments were looked after. You know, there's a civil service that the deputies go through that they, you know, to vend for hiring. Um, you know, no matter what happens, it, it was difficult to, um, uh, to do. I, I don't take it lightly. I think you all know me very well that um, something like this was, um, was difficult. So, uh, Joe Ferretti, do you have a question for Commission President Whitaker? Yeah, Jim, uh, the most we can ask of our public officials, those who hold elected office, is that uh, whenever they make difficult decisions like this, that they do so in a very deliberative way, and they do it uh, based on evidence and, and information at hand. Uh, speak to your comfort level in terms of the information provided to you by the prosecutor in the presentation, which I assume was done in, in uh, executive session. And yes, it was. The deliberative, and the deliberative process that you went through with your fellow county commissioners. Are you satisfied that there was a fair and comprehensive vetting of this information and, our, and, and speak to your comfort level uh, regarding that whole process? Uh, my comfort level was, was very high uh, with the evidence that we were uh, given and, and what we read through. Um, during the executive session um, with parties, all the parties to be that were in there, um, you know, we listened to everything that was said um, in, in, intently. So, once we excused those parties, and then it was just the five of us um, sitting there, you know, we deliberated, we talked about it, we, you know, we all felt our own um, decision making that was, I left it up to them. Um, I expressed my, my thoughts about it, and I said by any means, I said maybe I shouldn't have went first, but I, you know, let them know how I felt, but please don't let me sway you in any way that you, uh, that you feel. Jim, and that, that's about it. So, was your reaction to this and the desire to do this interview this morning and the vote taken yesterday was any of that influenced by the blowback in the aftermath of the situation with the appointment of Dan Delier to the commission and uh, Commissioner Mock to the uh, position of county clerk? No, not really. I, uh, I matter of fact, I didn't really think about it until you just said anything or said something, but uh, my decision um, was was to make sure that, you know, that we did have integrity together as the commission and that, you know, the citizens of Berkeley County could, could hang their hat on that. Any final comments or thoughts as this situation continues to unfold, Jim? Uh, just any, I tell you what, it, it, it was difficult. It was, um, there's not a, I lost a good bit of sleep over it, so, you know, it's a decision I didn't take lightly. Um, I, many parties are going to be affected by this. Um, there's not going to be a very any good outcome, I can tell that, you know, just by how things have progressed. So with that being said, I just um, I, I hope it's speedy. I hope it's, you know, um, gets to the point, get it covered or not get it covered. I say get it out the door and, and then move on to the next item. So. And if you were, you were asked this before and I missed it, my apologies, but can you tell us a timeline as to how long this situation has been considered or discussed amongst the county commission? Is, was this just because of yesterday or had this been something that you've been thinking about for a couple of weeks? Uh, it, to be honestly, it's been a, a couple of weeks that, the, uh, that we were enlightened on some things and not really given the full information at that point. Um, we then when we were given the information, it it, um, it it did take a while to to get it um, massaged in and, and understand exactly what we were asked to do and and uh, and how to do it. So, but yeah, it, uh, it it's been a process for for a while. I mean, you know, I think probably about eight to ten days. Jim, thank you very much for your time this morning. I appreciate it. Anytime, Rob. I uh, hope everybody has a wonderful day and uh, let's uh, let's. 
look forward to warmer weather. I don't like cold weather anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jim. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Take care. Uh, Jim Whitaker, Berkeley County Commission President. Uh, Colin is now uh, working to get the uh, prosecuting attorney, Kitty wilkes delegate by telephone, the filer of the petition. Joe uh, Ferretti, any uh, new um, information from the two members of the Berkeley County Commission, the president and vice president, uh, that enlightens you as to the situation and how it's been considered? Um, no, none other than, than uh, I guess, the sense you get that this was a weighty decision, as it should be. Uh, I imagine being a, an elected official and having this kind of oversight over another elected official is not the most comfortable thing to, to be doing. And I get the sense that they took this situation very seriously. And uh, and you can just hear it in their voice this morning that it it's difficult and troubling for them. Uh, you know, Jim saying you lost sleep over it. Uh, uh, you, you would, I guess, expect nothing less uh, from, from these folks. And, but that gives you a little bit of comfort that uh, this was not something done uh, on the spur of the moment, that there was a deliberative process here. And they, uh, it sounds to me like they, they came to the conclusion uh, unanimously that this was a situation that could not be uh, allowed to continue. And so the removal petition has been filed. We are now joined by the Berkeley County Prosecuting Attorney, Katie wilkes delegate Katie, good morning. Thank you for being with us today. Good morning. There were a few things that you wanted to clarify. Please uh, take the moment and do it. I just wanted to um, first state that out of respect to the petitioner, um, you know, of course, all, all allegations are just allegations until they are proven before the, the three-judge panel. Um, but uh, there were some questions about the process, and I, I just wanted to um, discuss that briefly. That you know, this is these are merely allegations. The um, the commission um, asked for some further information on on things that were happening, and were permitted to review um, a petition. Um, and it, it's been something that I don't think anyone involved has taken lightly. Um, and at this point. You know, it's been filed, as I think your audience has, has heard about recently, will be reviewed by our, our chief judge and then sent on to the Supreme Court for them to appoint uh, a three-judge panel um, to to hear evidence and make a determination about removal. Um, but I just wanted to emphasize, uh, again, that this is not an action that I think anyone involved has, has taken lightly. Um, it's just, you know, I was elected to keep our community safe and, and do the right thing for Berkeley County. And once we were able to view evidence supporting the allegations in the petition, I knew it was the right thing to do. Joe Ferretti. Katie, first let me uh, commend you and the others, of course, who have come on the radio this morning to uh, speak to the public about this. Uh, I think it says something about you folks who, hold these offices that you're willing to uh, uh, address some of these matters, which we know are difficult. And we know your office works closely with the Sheriff's Department in, in all matters that uh, you're dealing with. So it's, I'm, I'm sure it's uh, not the easiest thing to do, but I commend you for that. Uh, I, I think it, it bears an explanation here so we understand. Cause we, we speak of this in terms of charges and allegations and uh, presumption of innocence. But a petition removal is is not, uh, in essence, a criminal matter. It's more of a civil process, isn't it, for for how we in the West Virginia Code set up a system to, to remove an elected official from office. Can you talk a little, a little bit about that? Sure. So you're absolutely right. This is a civil action, not a criminal action. And I would equate it to... Um, you know, when we have a situation where there's uh, allegations relating to child abuse, there could be both a criminal action and a civil action ongoing at the same time. And there's different standards for each and there's different liabilities and um, repercussions at the end of each, but they're not mutually exclusive. So, you know, there's an ongoing criminal case that I'm not involved in and can't comment on. Um, but uh, this specifically is a civil action um, and 
uh, I just, out of an abundance of caution and respect, have been sort of repeating the, um, you know, allegations until proven in court. But it is not the same as a, as a criminal action where there are allegations that have to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, however, there's still due process afforded. There's still a hearing. It's in front of, you know, a three-judge panel. And um, there's still a burden that we have to meet by by proving these allegations, by clear and convincing evidence. Katie, when is that trial date, or has it not been set yet? It has not been set. Um, the petition first goes to the chief judge for review to determine that, um, if proven, the allegations would warrant removal, essentially. Um, it then goes to the uh, chief justice of the Supreme Court to appoint the three-judge panel. And I believe there's a it's not less than 20 days after receipt that the chief justice shall appoint the panel. So we don't have a specific timeline, but um, knowing what I know about how criminal cases move forward and can be continued and when those are set, um, it would be my hope and intent that this be um, heard swiftly. Um, and you know, we're, we'll certainly be prepared for that. Mike Hyde had asked the question earlier as to why go to the county commission for a vote when it appeared to be within your power to proceed without a vote from the commission. You know, I did hear that, and I um, appreciated Larry's, um, I guess, fellow lawyering perspective that um, certainly I think uh, belt and suspenders is always the way to go. Uh, A united front is important. I think that you know, I can't speak for anyone else involved in this, but I know that, um, you know, we were all aware of uh, or made aware of the situation and um, all chose to to act to move forward in getting this evidence in front of a three-judge panel for review. Um, you know, could I have acted on my own? Yes, but um, I think that it's... Uh, Larry's use of belt and suspenders is a very uh, lawyer and prosecutorial way of of thinking of things is that, you know, we wanted to all have the opportunity to review this, all have the opportunity to act and, um, you know, do what the public expects of us. The information that you presented in your petition, was all of that information gathered from Dan James' investigation? Um, no. And so I, I should clarify that Dan's, um, the scope of his investigation, um, was, I believe, related to the, um, events, uh, dealing with the sheriff's daughter and what arose uh, out of that. And then other, other things came to light, essentially, uh, on top of that, that we were made aware of, but not specifically by Dan. Was there an answer yes, or you'd say, I can't answer, that's fine too. Was was there an active investigation that you were pursuing a side of Dan James' information that, that, that brought this information about, or was it more or less of an anonymous tip? I don't want to get into the specifics, but I, don't, I also don't want to leave the listeners thinking that there was some sort of separate active investigation that I was... Um, that I was necessarily pursuing because, as you know, I did request the, the special prosecutor for the criminal investigatory side of things. Um, and I also should clarify that um, special prosecutors are available solely for criminal actions. So, um, you know, the referral was made in uh, for, for the criminal investigation, but uh, moving forward here, what I was provided, um, I, it was incumbent upon me to, to take action. Um, but uh, in terms of the specific investigation, it, it just sort of um, we were made aware of of what came out of the criminal investigation, and then made aware of additional information. And and you know, out of fairness to, I guess, letting this process play out in court, I don't want to get into the specifics of how that came about. Absolutely, and I know you're short on time. Do you have time for another question? Yes, Bill. Uh, okay. Uh, good morning, Katie. Uh, do you anticipate that the uh, 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 the arrangement of the affidavit in front of Judge Faircloth will be modified or changed to incorporate these new charges? No, I want to be clear that these are entirely um, separate from the uh, the criminal case. So, w- well, let me ask what specifically your question was. Are you asking whether 
whether his criminal case will encompass anything from this or just yeah. asking procedurally. No, no, yes, uh, would encompass anything from this, specifically his secondary employment and the charge that he's been directing county dollars into his second employment. So I can't speak to as to whether, you know, a special prosecutor may um, may consider those at this point, And I don't want to get into the potential criminal aspect of, of that. But um, what I can say is um, at this point, the any sort of criminal action and the civil petition, although the civil petition encompasses the details of the criminal action, they are wholly separate. And um, I'm not involved with the, the criminal action. So. Um, one, while there's overlapping details procedurally, you know, one does not affect the other. Thank you. Sure. K- Katie, Michael Haiti here. Um, I, I, to follow up on Bill's question, there's two cases going on, one civil, one criminal. How, timing-wise, how will they go? Will, will one of them be tried in, totally before the other, or will they be side by side, and how will one affect the other? They would not be side by side. Um, the civil action would not impact the criminal action. Uh, it wouldn't. It couldn't be used as evidence in in a criminal action or anything like that, unless, of course, there were statements made that um, that could potentially be be used uh, in in that capacity. But um, generally speaking, they're not side by side. They're not related. They're going to be heard by two different bodies. Um, they will be, uh, you know, uh, the parties will be represented by different individuals. Um, you know, in the civil action, it's the commission and myself and my capacity as a uh, prosecutor. In the criminal action, it's Stan James, a special prosecutor. Um, so they're, while they deal with some of the same allegations, they are wholly separate cases, um, and the, the timing of each is not, Neither of their timing is dependent on the other. So um, the the civil action um, could and I think probably will proceed before any sort of criminal action. Katie, thank you very much. Uh, do you have a final thought? I just, again, want to reiterate that none of this was, was taken lightly. And, and again, out of fairness, I, I want to reiterate these are just allegations. There will be an opportunity in court for... Um, each side to to present evidence and um, I appreciate having the opportunity to answer any questions um, that the public had and as always appreciate their their trust absolutely Katie thank you very much thank you thanks Katie Berkeley County Prosecutor Attorney Katie Wilkes Delegetti with apologies to uh, Larry Schultz and his final question there because Katie was on a time block she had to be out by 905 at the latest so we didn't want to make her late